The Emergency by Breitling is a personal survival instrument equipped with both a multifunction analog digital watch and an independent miniature distress beacon. When activated, the microtransmitter of the Emergency transmits a digital signal every 50 seconds on the 406 MHz frequency. This signal, which meets the COSPES SARSAT program specifications, is composed of a hexadecimal code, which notably includes the reference of the country in which the beacon was registered, as well as its serial number. This signal is picked up by at least one low-orbit LEOSAR satellite, or by a GEOSAR satellite in geosynchronous orbit. COSPES SARSAT is based on a worldwide satellite system for identifying distress calls and locating radio beacons. This device is an essential aid to search and rescue operations for land, air, and sea. The purpose is to reduce the delay in communicating distress calls to search and rescue services, as well as the time needed to locate the victims and to bring help. In most cases, the alert is picked up within a few minutes. Depending on the satellite coverage, it may sometimes take longer, but always less than two hours. The control center immediately retransmits the signal to the search and rescue services, thus enabling them to launch rescue operations. The emergency simultaneously broadcasts an analog signal on the 121.5 MHz aviation distress frequency. The latter enables rescue teams to home in on the victim as fast and as accurately as possible. Once activated, the emergency broadcasts its emergency signal for at least 18 hours. As a precautionary measure and to avoid abusive use of the survival transmitter, the emergency is designed for a single use only. The watch and the transmitter are independent of the other. Damage to the watch observed after a crash does not necessarily mean that the transmitter is not operational. In case of distress, the procedure is as follows. Unscrew the main cap A of the antenna in a counterclockwise direction. The ring gives way and releases the cap. Pull out the cap A to deploy the antenna until it separates from the cap. This action simultaneously releases and ejects the secondary cap B. If the cap is not ejected, remove and discard it. This will reveal a small red handle. Pull the red handle toward the outside so as to deploy the second section of the antenna until it comes free of this handle. It is essential to properly pull out and detach the cap from the handle until they separate in order to deploy both antenna sections. As soon as the antenna is deployed, a green indicator starts blinking at 12 o'clock on the dial. This means the alert will continue being signaled until the battery is completely depleted. Positioning the emergency with both antenna deployed is a determining factor in achieving optimal transmission conditions. The two antenna sections must be kept upright, with the main section, the shorter of the two, pointing upwards, and the secondary section, the longer one, pointing downwards, but not touching the ground. To ensure efficient proper transmission, it is important to avoid any contact between the antenna sections and any metallic elements. Also, avoid touching or manipulating the antenna sections with your hands, immersing them in water, or even putting them in contact with water. The transmitter of the emergency must be used outside and operates at optimal capacity when affording a clear view of the sky. In these conditions, the user can be sure that the 406 MHz signal serving to trigger the alert will reach a satellite and that the 121.5 MHz signal can be used by the rescue team for homing in on the site of the distress. As far as possible, avoid excessively undulating terrain such as ravines. Trees also impair the quality of the signal. Consequently, be sure to try and find a maximum of open sky, preferably by placing oneself on a peak or on a rock. Absolutely avoid triggering the beacon inside a car or an aircraft. The signal would be significantly dampened or even entirely obstructed by metal components. 
Once the distress signal is activated, it is advisable to avoid moving around so as to increase the chances of being found by the rescue team. As soon as the user has been rescued, or in case of inadvertent activation, it is important to neutralize the broadcasting of the distress signal. To do this, simply either cut the two antenna sections at their base, or wind them around the watch case. The indicator, located at 12 o'clock, will continue to blink until the battery is completely run down. The emergency by Breitling is delivered with a charger, serving to recharge and test the smooth operation of the beacon, ideally before each mission or expedition. The emergency is designed as two separate modules, with one battery for the watch and a rechargeable battery for the transmitter. The battery of the beacon has been specifically developed to meet the extremely stringent criteria laid down in the COSPAS SARSAT regulations. After a recharge, the distress beacon is fully operational for two months. After that time, the indicator with a luminous diode at 12 o'clock on the dial begins to blink red. When the indicator is blinking red, the distress beacon can still transmit a signal, but for a shorter period. This means the battery must be recharged as soon as possible. To recharge the battery, the watch must be placed on the charger. As soon as the three contact points on the watch are correctly connected, the luminous diode on the watch and the charge indicator light on the charger will turn and stay red. The duration of this operation varies from a few minutes to around two hours, depending on the prior level of battery charge. Once the recharge is complete, the system performs a self-test of the beacon. If the latter is successful, the charge indicator and the self-test indicator will turn green, as too will the luminous diode on the watch. If the self-test fails, the self-test indicator will show red, as will the luminous diode on the watch. In this case, the emergency must be entrusted as soon as possible to a Breitling service center. It must not, under any circumstances, be used as a distress beacon. Before departing on an expedition, it is advisable to recharge the battery, a procedure immediately followed by a self-test. A first service must be performed on the battery replacement date appearing on the back of the watch and will be done free of charge. In order to ensure the required reliability and performance, the battery will subsequently need to be replaced every two years. The emergency is an emergency instrument and must only be activated in case of genuine distress. Any abusive activation may be sanctioned by a fine. The consequences of such an act are the sole responsibility of the owner. Each distress beacon has a unique identifier. The latter is part of the signal transmitted and makes it possible to retrieve contact information for both the owner and a contact person. It also includes the code of the country in which the beacon is registered. To avoid delaying rescue in case of an emergency, the distress beacons must be registered at the time of purchase with the national authority having jurisdiction. The procedure in force in various countries may be consulted on the COSPAS SARSAT website as well as in your paper-based documents. The serial number of the beacon is engraved on the back of the watch, along with the name of the country in which it is registered. In case of a change of owner, a new registration procedure must be completed. The Emergency is also a crown-controlled multifunction analog digital watch with 12 and 24-hour display, day and date indications, using the timer, second time zone display, using the chronograph, and using the alarm. 